Are you ready? Well, here's some good news, and then some bad news, and then some good news again. The good news. We are doing well at Matthew Moss. In fact, really well. There are only 10 schools in the world judged to be properly preparing learners for the 21st century, and only one is from the UK. And it's us, Matthew Moss. Furthermore, we are in a school which is learning not to talk down to people, but using transactional analysis theory to promote equal adult-to-adult -adult discussions. And our school shares Dweck's ideas of fixed and growth mindset with everyone to show us all how we can free ourselves from being stuck and through effort grow our minds. And our school rightly gives learners the freedom to make decisions about what, how and where to learn. And we all share the Ellie terms as a way of reflecting on our learning so that we can see more clearly how to do things better. And all the understanding and positive dispositions to learning stay with us beyond school and help us all throughout our lives. Excellent. Top stuff. The bad news. There remains a barrier, though, which can block us from getting to the opportunities we deserve. It is a wall which can stand between us and success in exams and application letters and interviews. And it's a wall of words. Because sometimes words seem long, complicated, difficult and unfamiliar in a way which throws us into our panic zone and then we don't understand a question in an exam or interview on a topic that we actually know lots about and could have answered really well. Or sometimes we don't have the words at hand to demonstrate in detail what we know and how well we can think. For instance, have you ever finished a test and said to a friend, what did you put for question two? Only, only to be told, yeah, that were easy. It was about so-and-so. At which point you realise you too could have answered it really well, but you hadn't fully understood the question. This is because you might not be familiar with what is known as academic language, as opposed to the everyday language we speak. And it feels so frustrating and depressing when that happens. It feels so unfair, like we are missing out. And we are. Basil Bernstein was right to tell the world that it is not lack of ability which often holds people back, but their failure to use appropriate language. Is there anything we can do about this? Well, time for some good news again. It's Matthew Moss, so we found a solution. And we found it by identifying a school which solved this problem 20 years ago in Wigan. A teacher called Mary Mason worked out a way of showing how everyday language, concrete language, can be made into the language of examinations and interviews, academic language, as and when we need to. And this understanding also means that we can quickly work out what difficult words and phrases mean, so that they are very quickly not difficult for us at all. The scheme is called Breakthrough to Learning. And when Mary Mason trialled the scheme at the Wigan School, the number of learners getting the exam results they needed doubled as a result. And learning to turn on the academic language when you need to won't only improve your results in every subject, it will make it so much easier to get past interviewers to the college places or apprenticeships or university places or jobs or internships that you soon will be so desperately wanting. Another value of Breakthrough to Learning is that it will help stimulate your intellectual growth and give your brain a good workout. After all, intelligence is not something that's fixed at birth, but rather something that you can learn. And remember that Carol Dweck shows us that everyone, through effort, dedication, schooling and experience, can grow. And Breakthrough to Learning will provide you the opportunity to maximise your brain power. So, how does the Breakthrough to Learning actually work in showing us how to use academic language? Through three books. Breakthrough to Learning 1, 2 and 3, which Mary Mason put together and which we'll be working on in English and then using the understanding we get throughout school in every subject. And then there will be no wall of words which we cannot break through after we've worked through the books. 
Here are a couple of examples of the kind of things we'll learn. A word looks strange and difficult. Get making links. For example, quadruped. Huh? Okay, quad. Quad bike. Four wheels. Ped. Pedicure. Pedal. Feet then. Quadruped. Something with four feet. Great stuff. Want to make an everyday concrete word into an academic word to expand your thinking in a piece of writing? Great. Simply change the form of the word. So, if you are using the word erode, a verb, a doing word, change it into erosion, a noun, a naming word. And now you have a form of the word which refers not merely to one thing eroding, but potentially all different types and examples of erosion. And, as we have said, such a simple change not only makes you sound more knowledgeable to others, including examiners and interviewers, but at the same time, it actually expands your thinking. Excellent. Breakthrough to learning is worth doing then. Working through the books will take some time and effort, but words will never be a barrier to you again. Result. And a breakthrough. To learning. And to the futures we can now create for ourselves.